So in our last web forms video, we blasted through an exercise with the goal of creating a very simple web forms application that connected to a database and displayed a list. And that was it. And so now that we made the leap and we've started our journey in web forms, we need to take a moment and sit back and take a look at what actually happened. I'm your host, Sean McKenzie. Thank you for joining me once again on my channel on data engineering. In this episode, we go back to our introduction to web forms playlist, and we're going to do a little recap of what we did last time so that we have a good understanding of exactly what was happening during our last episode and sort of how we can understand all of the different technologies and where they are and where they're running at the time that we executed them and all kinds of things like that. This is really going to help us to understand those things. Let's get to it. If you can, join my weekly drop-in session on Discord. Access is through Patreon. Okay, so we started this journey and we're using our local computer and uh, we're really just firing up our Windows computer and uh, we're going to be using some environments uh, in our little project and one of those is the cloud and we're going to get a couple of things from out in the internet and uh, the first place that we went was to the Microsoft website and uh, we took a look at uh, how to download Visual Studio uh, into our computer and install it uh, with some options that you can see on my downloads page I did miss that during the video but essentially we just chose the ASP.NET development option and then uh, we went ahead and we went through the creation of a new project and the project sort of just opened like this this is what it looks like with the blue text and that's an ASPX uh, markup page and what you see here is the auto-generated content for sort of like an empty shell of an application that has a couple of forms in it so it's all auto-generated we didn't do any programming yet and uh, what we did was we took a quick look around and saw that we had some uh, ASPX pages which are our forms and we also have some some other um, site master pages and things like that which we kind of explored but the intent was really just to get started with this blank application to see what it looks like and so we hit F5 on our keyboard and we saw that this nice little application started it sort of looks like a blank application we changed a few things we put a title in like that tow operations because we were going to do some kind of tow truck application or listing and so you can see what it looks like here with basically the default options and that's pretty cool it runs on a little IIS Express server that your computer starts automatically using Visual Studio and it runs all locally on your computer without any connections to the internet and so the next thing we needed to do was to create a database and in order to create a database in the cloud uh, what we needed to do was connect to Microsoft Azure in order to create an Azure SQL database that we could connect to with our application uh, and in order to do that, what we did was we went to portal.azure.com and we went into the portal and we created a database. And the database was in our Azure resource group that we created. And it was an Azure SQL database that we called Tow Operations for our little fictional tow listing that we wanted to retrieve from the uh, database and display in our online application that we're building in Visual Studio. But before we can design our database, we need to download another tool from Microsoft. And that is the SQL Server Management Studio, which is great for SQL servers or Azure SQL databases, which are in the cloud. Now make a note that this is another application like Visual Studio that you run on your local computer and it can manage and help you to create and design databases in Azure and so that's exactly what we wanted to do there 
And so what we did was we learned how to connect our SQL Server Management Studio to our database, which is in Azure. And then we created a fictional table using some, some SQL commands, a very simple create table command. And then we filled that table with some, some sample dummy data. And that was enough for us to have a little database in the cloud that we can connect to using our application and some connectivity that we would do in the next step. And so at that point, we could close our SQL Server Management Studio, having designed our database and put some data into it to start it off. We don't actually need uh, SSMS uh, for the rest of the process. It's really just for the database part. And so that brought us back to our little application that we had created as the default application. We didn't do any programming at this point. Um, and we decided to do a little bit of code behind uh, programming, just like we see in our other applications that are event-driven, like Microsoft Access. And in this case, we had a page load event, which is similar to a form load event in Microsoft Access. And what we did was we did a little bit of VB coding to connect to our little database in Azure and get a list and then display it in our application. But at this point, everything is still running on our local computer. We have a little web server that's for development that's running and it's showing us our, our application and it's connecting out to Azure in order to get some data, but it's all running very locally and we need to do a few configuration and, and uh, deployment activities in order to put our application into the cloud. And the way that we could tell that it's still running locally on our computer is by looking in the address bar at the top of our browser that pops up and it has that local host address in there with some random uh, port assignment. And it's basically uh, showing you that it's running locally and it's running the application, but it's all still local. And it's really great for development because you can make a few changes and then rerun it and then make a few changes and rerun it but it's all running locally. And uh, when you're finally done with all of your changes, that's when you wanna publish it out into Azure. And so you must be wondering, well, where do I publish it in Azure? And the answer is you publish it into app services. So we're gonna go back to our browser. We went back to portal.azure.com and we chose app services, which is where we can put our application. And so app services has that nice little a world icon on it there and so uh, that's where you can put your application and you put you can publish it directly from Visual Studio so long as you're logged into Visual Studio with the same account that you're using to do your portal uh, activities or uh, another login that has permissions to do so and so having completed the completion of our app service application uh, with no application published to it yet. Uh, we returned to our Visual Studio and that's where we did our publishing of our application uh, directly into our app service that we had created. And so at that point, all we really have to do is open a browser and go to the web address that we had chosen for our application. And during our setup, we configured security and so we were prompted for our login at the time that we opened our app and then once we opened our app we had our nice little application running with the web address that we had chosen connecting to our azure database just like we wanted all nice and secure and ready to go and now we're set up nicely for future episodes where we're going to create all kinds of controls do all kinds of neat little development tricks and lots of other cool stuff